parallel plate capacitors, each with the capacitance C, are charged to potential difference and connected to it in parallel. Then the plate separation in one of the capacitors is doubled. A, find the total energy of the system of two capacitors before the plate separation is doubled. B, find the potential difference across each capacitor after the plate separation is doubled. C, find the total energy of the system after the plate separation is doubled. And D, reconcile the difference in the answers to parts A and C with the law of conservation of energy. That's a question. So, initially, we have two capacitors. We'll call them capacitor one and capacitor two. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to increase the distance between one of the parallel plate capacitors. We'll call it capacitor two, such that it has twice the distance um, between two plates. So we know, let's see how we're gonna label this, that D initial, or D final, I guess is how we should do it, is equal to two times D initial, where that D represents the plate separation. First question has to do with just initially, before we separate the two plates, what is the total energy stored in the capacitors? Class, is energy a vector or a scalar? Scalar. So for part A, if we want to find the total energy, that's just equal to the total energy initial. That's equal to the energy stored in capacitor 1 initial plus the energy stored in capacitor 2 initial. We have all sorts of equations for, uh, did they say something about the electric potential difference? Sarah Jane Jones, did they say we know the electric potential difference? Um, yeah, delta V. Yeah. Okay, so delta V is a known uh, and that would be delta V initial, I guess. And those would be the same. So notice, just for yucks, that the electric potential difference for one initial is equal to the electric potential difference across two initial, which is the electric potential difference initial. We have all sorts of equations for the energy of a capacitor. Uh, there are three, you have two on your equation sheet. They have to do with whether you know charge, capacitance, and electric potential difference. Clearly, in this particular case, we have capacitance and electric potential difference. Michael, what is the equation for the energy stored in a capacitor in terms of capacitance and electric potential difference, please? You should help us out. Say it. Two delta v. Q. What was my question? Winter. What is the electric the energy stored in a capacitor in terms of capacitance and electric potential difference? That's not an equation. Anyway, so here we go. It is one half times the capacitance times the electric potential difference. So one, this is one half times the capacitance of. Um, uh, let's do, let's do this rather than because uh, we're going to have initial and final. So I do want to identify this capacitance. So we'll identify this capacitance initial as just capacitance initial. So this is capacitance initial multiplied by the electric potential difference initial. And that was squared. Yes, Winter? Yeah. Okay. Plus one half times, and this is one initial, plus one half times capacitance of two initial times the electric potential difference initial squared. Notice these two capacitances are the same, so we could just have this is equal to the capacitance initial times the electric potential difference initial squared. Because the one halves simply add up to one. Okay. That is our answer to part A. Part B. 
says to find the electric potential difference across one final and the electric potential difference across two final after we have separated the two uh, plates of the second one so they're twice as far as what they were before. After we separate the plate distance of the second one, are these two capacitors still in parallel? Yeah, yes. yes. Therefore, what do we know? What's the same, Jenkins? Notice the electric potential difference of one final is going to be equal to the electric potential difference of two final. We'll just call it the electric potential difference final, which is what we're trying to solve for. Because by definition, any time two uh, capacitors are in parallel, that means they have the same electric potential difference. Are these <coughs> are these capacitors grounded, Tyler? Uh, no. No. Are they attached to a battery, Tyler? No. no. So what do we know about the charge total initial versus the charge total final, Tyler? They're equal. It's the same. Charge doesn't come from anywhere. There's nowhere for it to come from or to go to. So the charge total initial equals the charge total final. In other words, Q1 initial plus Q2 initial is equal to Q1 final plus Q2 final. What about the capacitance of two final? What do we know about that. We've doubled the plate distance. Kat? They're going to be um, half as much as the initial? Yes, why? Um, because capacitance equals um, K times the amount of A over D, and since you're doubling hold, D. Hold up. So the area is constant, so I'm not going to put any subscripts on that. And this is D final, right? So. That is equal to K E naught A times 2 D initial. That means that capacitance 2 half of K E naught A over D initial. What is the dielectric constant times the permittivity of free space times the, the area of the plate divided by the initial plate separation equal to zero? This. <laughs> Everything in the parentheses there. What's it equal? Um, is that the capacitance of the That is the initial capacitance. So notice we know capacitance to final is one half of the capacitance initial. Okay. What about all of these charges? What can we do with this equation? Sierra? Well, we have the equation that capacitance equals Q over change to B. Can we change that around to get charge? Charge equals capacitance times the electric potential difference. So on the left, we have the capacitance of one initial times the electric potential difference of one initial plus the capacitance of two initial times the electric potential difference of two initials equal to the capacitance of one final times the electric potential difference of one final plus the capacitance of two final times the electric potential difference of two final. I apologize, it got kind of crowded there. Okay, what can we do with this equation? John? Um, everybody uh, double V. All the electric potential differences are not the same. Oh. We're trying to solve for the electric potential difference fine. We need, we can start talking about things that are the same, but not all the electric potential differences are the same. Uh, Parallel. Well, you can put in uh, the. Okay, we know C2 final is equal to C, the capacitance initial, divided by 2. What else can we put in here? The syllable. The final potential differences are the same. 
the final potential differences are the same. So we have electric potential difference final and electric potential difference final. Those are the same. What else? Kat? Um, well, the capacitance initials are the same in the electric potential initials are the same. Notice the capacitance, capacitances are the same and the electric potential differences are the same. What about capacitance one final? Stay. It doesn't change, so it's the same as capacitance. The capacitance one final, it does not change, so it's just the capacitance initial. So we have something that everyone brought to the party. The capacitance initial. <laughs> times the electric potential difference initial is equal to the electric potential difference final plus, or actually we can just do on the right hand side, we have uh, three halves the electric potential difference final. So the electric potential difference final is equal to four times the electric potential difference initial divided by three. Four thirds of the electric potential difference of what we started with. That is the answer to part B. So we have an increase in the electric potential difference between the parallel plates. Yes. Part C is what is the total uh, potential electric potential energy stored in the capacitors. Again, it is just going to be equal to the addition of the two here. So we have the um, one final plus the energy stored in two final. Again, we have one half capacitance times the electric potential difference. So this is one half times the capacitance of one final times the electric potential difference of one final squared plus one half times the capacitance of two final times the electric potential difference of two final squared. Tell me what we could substitute in for these various items, Nitish, please. Well, capacitance one final is just capacitance initial. You saw for delta V, uh, it's four thirds delta V I. Uh, capacitance two final is equal to one half um, C I. Yeah. And then this is the same thing. Good. So now we just have a bunch of fractions. Uh, everything is capacitance initial times electric potential difference squared. Uh, on this side, we have 4 squared, 16, divided by 3 squared, 9 times 2, 18, plus uh, 4 squared, 16, again, divided by, uh, 32. All right, so we have then uh, capacitance initial delta, electric potential difference squared. Um, we have 32 divided by 36. Wait, this isn't 32, it's 36. 32 uh, and 16 over 36. So this is 48 over 36 uh, times our various items there. 48 over 36, 4 thirds, correct? In other words, we end with more energy than we started with. Free energy. It's not free energy. <laughs> Answer to D. Where did the energy come from? Jenkins. Did you take energy from the plates part? The two plates, one is positive, one is negative, right? They are being attracted to one another. In order to pull those two plates apart, we had to do work on the system that put this put energy into the system. And you could see it, it's one third of the capacitance initial times the electric potential difference initial squared is the amount of energy that we put into the system, the amount of work we had to do on the system in order to cause this to happen. 